My colleagues, uh, Kyle Fortenberry and Courtney Green at PFG Precision Optics in Ocean Springs, and I met a couple of years ago and discovered that they had quit equipment that I was interested in testing for some years before. So we collaborated on comparing three different sources that they had available. I and Assist, the course, is a real asset in improving a lot of things, including adhesion, density, hardness, durability, structure, stress control, stability with humidity and temperature, stoichiometry and absorption. And a cost reduction comes from the fact that you replace heating up your substrates with ion assist so that uh, the process time is reduced and the temperature difference between room temperature helps when there's a conflict between the expansion of the coating and the expansion of the substrate, which causes stress. Most cases using ion assist tend to benefit, benefit from having the lowest practical chamber pressure to minimize the competition between the chamber background gas and the atoms that are being deposited on the surface. Another advantage is the lowest ion voltage uh, to minimize dissociation of ions. So we're striving for low pressure and low voltage. And also we want the highest ion current we can get to allow a higher deposition rate to keep the atom arrival rate uh, where it wants to be to give maximum density. Uh, here's a typical Mark II ion source where the gas comes in through the bottom and there's a magnetic field to enhance the ionization of the electrons that are gyrating around in the throat of this. The electrons are coming from a filament here, which helps the ionization of the argon or other gas. And then the electrons going upward tend to neutralize the positive ions that are uh, building up on the substrate. Uh, the Saintec ST55 ion source, what I'd call the smaller one, uh, has a nice geometry in that it's got a water-cooled anode, which allows higher powers, and the gas is admitted right in the active area. And also this is, uh, I believe it's titanium nitride plated, so it's a very durable surface. Uh, the drawback of the Saintex source from my point of view is that it doesn't have a direct current power supply, a DC power supply. It's got a rectified AC power supply. So it goes from zero to a, pos a, a, a yeah, positive anode voltage and anode current. The problem with that is it goes from zero to the maximum anode voltage and back again. So I really don't know what my average anode voltage is. So it's hard to characterize the processes as a function of anode voltage and current. Uh, also the voltage, they've got like transformer taps at around uh, 220 or 225 uh, about 180 volts, 140 volts, 110 volts, and 90 volts. So these points are places that you could operate and you can change the ion current so you can actually travel uh, in this direction, but you can't change this direction. So uh, my colleagues had a Kaufman and Robinson power supply and so the project was really to use the DC power supply to drive the anode voltage and current for all three, and I, three ion sources. And this power supply has the capability of 250 volts and 20 amps, or actually five kilowatts. So the energy of the ions in, the, in electron volts and the ion current depend primarily on the filament or neutralizer current the drive discharge current, the drive discharge voltage, the source geometry, the pumping speed of the chamber and the gas flow. 
So the gas flow needed for a given discharge voltage can be significantly reduced by additional neutralizer filament current beyond that needed to eliminate sparking. And this was the work of Slava Zhurin, uh, who published a book on ion sources about uh, almost 10 years ago now. What Zhurin discovered is normally we will neutralize the substrate. If it's an insulator, it'll tend to get charged up by the positive ions arriving. And uh, so we need to put electrons in to neutralize that. So the normal situation is you get just enough electrons so that you don't get arcing on the insulating substrates. So under those circumstances, we might be where the ion current and the neutralizer current were equal and you get a curve like this, which is a little bit of a surprise because it has two humps. And the lore had been that with a source like this, if you were driving it at, uh, let's say 90 electron volts, that your distribution of ions would be about peak up at about 60% of that. But as it turns out from Jurin's measurements, it's really quite different than what the lore had been. And here's an example from Jurin uh, at a drive volts of 150 volts. So it's actually peaking up mostly at about 150 volts. And with the minimum neutralizer, it's got the two humps again. So perhaps the averaging of of these two humps came out at about that 60%. But if I put additional neutralizer in by a factor of two, this curve becomes interestingly uh, more monotonic and there's no second hump down here at the low voltage as we saw also here. So uh, the new lore ought to be that we certainly have a broad spread around the drive voltage, but it's more uh, of this nature than the previous one. So I wanna take advantage of that because it turns out uh, the, the extra gas flow uh, reduces the process pressure and reduces the competition of that gas to produce an increased film density on the substrate. Uh, Kyle put together this circuitry uh, for the neutralizer uh, in the system he was testing. And he also had a Faraday cup. So with a Faraday cup, you could, uh, if you had no neutralizer, you'd see a strong positive voltage because of the ions. And if you keep adding electrons until that voltage went to zero, then you were neutralized according to the Faraday cup. Normally our practice would be, we look in the chamber and if we see arcing, we turn the neutralizer up until the arcing disappeared and then to add a little bit extra for measure so we wouldn't get any arcing. Or if we started out and didn't see any arcing, we could reduce the neutralizer current uh, until there were less electrons to the point where we did see arcing. So just looking in the chamber was a test somewhat equivalent to using the Faraday cup. Now our results for the smaller Saintec source, the SD55, were as we see here. And our goal is to move all of this toward this corner down here at the low pressures and the low voltages. Low pressure to minimize the competition of the chamber gas low voltages to minimize the dissociation. For example, we've pretty well, pretty well proved in papers that we've published that magnesium fluoride tends to dissociate if it's hit with too high electron volts of the incoming ion assist. Now these dashed lines here are with the just barely neutralized situation and if I double the neutralizer current, I get these solid lines. So they're moving in the desired direction. Here's a similar curve for the Mark II, Mark II plus, uh, just 10% neutralization as they recommend. 
And if we go to 20% neutralization, we again move in the direction that we like. And then uh, here is the large Saintex source, which will run up to almost three kilowatts or maybe even more. Whereas something like the Mark II will run perhaps uh, five kilowatts uh, under the conditions that we like. So there's, here's the maximum power with the, the minimum neutralization. And then this would be the maximum power with the more neutralizer, twice the neutralizer. So again, we get down nice and low here in this region here where the chamber pressure is, is uh, as low as we can get it. Now here's the comparison of the three sources that we tested running at five amps. So if we're running at 100 volts here, that would be 500 watts with each of these sources. So we can see that the big Saintec source uh, is the best for these applications in that we're moving as far in this direction as possible. If we're planning to work up around 200 volts, then these are all pretty much the same in terms of their pressure at 200 electron volts. So the conclusions is that this work has determined the behavior of these three sources when operated on a DC power supply, which is the driving condition for my interest in this. And it provides knowledge of the energy of the ions used in the process, which had not previously been available because of the nature of their power supply. Uh, these three sources all provide similar results when operating at 200 volts, but if operating at 60 volts, for, for example, the SD3000 gives the lowest pressure. Thank you for your attention. Uh, here's my contact information if you have questions and I can be of any help to you.